If you want to migrate your Kafka cluster from Zookeeper over to KRAFT, this is the video for you. I'll take you through the different phases of migration to get your Confluent Kafka cluster up and running on even more solid infrastructure than before. I personally migrated over 10 Kafka clusters already, including some high volume clusters with several thousand messages flowing through every second. And this migration can be done on live clusters with zero downtime. Back in July 2020, a Jira task in the Apache Kafka space was created with the purpose of replacing Zookeeper with a self-managed metadata quorum. Five years later, and KRAFT is a production-ready consensus protocol that removes Apache Kafka's dependency on Zookeeper for metadata management. It greatly simplifies the Kafka architecture by consolidating responsibility for metadata into Kafka itself rather than splitting it between the two different systems, Kafka and Zookeeper. KRAP mode makes use of a new quorum controller service in Kafka, which replaces the previous controller and makes use of an event-based variant of the Raft consensus protocol. So, what are the benefits of the new controller? KRAP enables right-sized clusters, meaning clusters that are sized with the appropriate number of brokers and compute power to satisfy a use case's throughput and latency requirements, with the potential to scale up to millions of partitions. It improves stability, simplifies the software, and makes it easier to monitor and administer. It allows Kafka to have a single security model for the whole system. It gives you a unified management model for configuration, networking setup, and communication protocols. It provides a lightweight, single process way to get started with Kafka. And at last, it makes controller failover near instantaneous. So let's talk about the phases of migration. There are several of them, but if you precisely follow the Confluent migration documentation, there should be no problems. Phase one is the initial phase. Make sure your Confluent Kafka cluster is upgraded to the latest version. As I'm recording this video, Confluent Platform 7.9 is the latest version, which provides you with Apache Kafka 3.9. You also want to review the security requirements for KRAFT in this phase. Another important step in this phase is to enable trace level logging for metadata migration. Restart the Kafka brokers after adding this line to the log4j properties found in the Kafka configuration directory. That's it for phase one. Let's move over to the next phase. Phase 2 involves configuring and starting one or more KRAF controllers. Before you can start a KRAF controller, you need to retrieve the ID of your existing cluster. You can get this ID by using the zookeeper shell command. Just run zookeeper shell localhost 2181 and connect to the local zookeeper. You should see a welcome to zookeeper message. Once you are logged in, just run get slash cluster slash ID to retrieve the cluster ID. Take note of this ID because you will need it when formatting the KRAF storage for your Kafka cluster. Now you need to configure each craft controller with the following configuration options. A node ID that is unique across all brokers and controllers. Migration enabled with zookeeper.metadata.migration.enable equals true. Zookeeper connection configuration, which you can probably just copy from your current broker configuration. Other KRAF mode required properties such as controller.quorum.voters and controller.listener.names. Right here on the screen, you can see a minimal example of the configuration you need to start a KRAF controller. When you're done with the configuration, you just need to format the KRAF storage and start each controller. To format the storage, you can use the kafka-storage command. Like showed here, you can run it with kafka-storage format with config and cluster ID options. With dash dash config, you specify the configuration file we just created. And with dash dash cluster ID, you just specify the cluster ID we found a minute ago. When you've done this, you should see a message that your storage is formatting with metadata version 3.9 or whatever the current version of Apache Kafka is. The formatting should be pretty quick. And when it's done, you can start the KRAF controller with Kafka server start. What I did here was to create a systemd script that starts the KRAF controller with the correct configuration file specified. Phase 3 is to migrate the broker metadata from Zookeeper to KRAF. Once the KRAF controllers are running, you will need to reconfigure each Kafka broker for KRAF migration and restart the Kafka broker. You can do a rolling restart to help ensure cluster availability throughout the migration. The metadata migration automatically starts when all the Kafka brokers has been restarted. You need to set the following configuration for the brokers. Interbroker protocol version needs to be set to 3.9 or whatever the current version of Kafka is. Zookeeper metadata migration enable equals true needs to be set to enable the migration on the broker side. Zookeeper.connect needs to be set, but I assume you already have that set in the Kafka broker configuration. KRAP mode requires properties such as controller.quorum.voters and controller.listener.names, but you already configured these in the KRAP controller in the previous phase, so you can copy the values from there into the Kafka broker configuration. The controller listener names should also be added to the listener security property map. 
And if you're using cluster linking, you need to enable the cluster linking metadata topic with confluent.cluster.link.metadata.topic.enable equals true. <laughs> when you have modified the Kafka broker configuration file with new values, do a rolling restart of each broker. And when all the Kafka brokers running with Zookeeper for metadata management are restarted with migration property set, the migration automatically begins. When the migration is complete, you should see the following entry in the active controllers log at info level. Completed migration of metadata from Zookeeper to KRAFT. You can also check your broker logs for the Z node type entry for slash controller. You should see KRAFT controller epoch. Welcome to phase four, where we migrate the Kafka brokers to actually use the KRAFT controllers. At this point, the metadata migration has completed, but the Kafka brokers are still running in Zookeeper mode. The KRAF controller is also running in migration mode and it will send remote procedure calls to the Zookeeper mode brokers. To migrate the brokers to KRAF, they need to be reconfigured as KRAF brokers and restarted. The following parameters need to be changed in the broker configuration. Broker ID is now replaced with node ID. Process.roles.broker needs to be added. Remove all Zookeeper configuration entries. If you are using ACLs, you need to change the authorizer class. To find out more about that topic, take a look at the authorizer documentation for more information about the authorization framework included in Apache Kafka if you use that. The following is an example of the broker configuration showing what it might look like. Here you can see that node ID is set and all the Zookeeper related configuration is commented out, including interbroker protocol version. Once your new broker configuration is ready, restart each broker in a rolling fashion. And when that is done, all the brokers are running in KRAF mode. The fifth and final phase of the migration is to remove the migration and Zookeeper entries from the KRAFT controller configuration. After removing or commenting out these entries, restart each controller and your cluster is now migrated to KRAF mode. At this point, you can also shut down all the instances of Zookeeper. Once you're finished with this step, it is not possible to revert back to Zookeeper mode. If you want to ensure the migration will be successful, you can wait a day or a week before finalizing the migration with phase 5. Monitor Kafka, KRAFT, and Zookeeper actively in this period. Personally, I just finalized this step immediately after phase 4 was done, but I did experiment a lot on test clusters before starting the migration in production clusters. The main lesson I learned from doing this migration process over many clusters was to precisely follow the migration documentation from Confluence. Do not skip any parts. Before I started the initial migration process, I read a couple of blogs covering the topic, but it seems like they were missing some points. So it seemed more unclear and difficult to actually execute the migration. But once I just went with the official documentation, it all made sense. If this video helped you, I'll be happy if you leave a like and a comment below. Or if you have any questions regarding the migration process, let me know in the comment section. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.